Hey guys, it's Chris from Fairly Awesome Podcast, their Fairly Awesome WTF Movie Review. Oh, what the f***? Is this for real? This week's movie is Scorcher, a 2002 end-of-the-world disaster flick in more ways than one, if you catch my drift. I'm saying it's both a movie about a disaster and the movie itself is a disaster. Okay, anyway. Scorcher opens in the Antarctic as a pair of scientists trek across the frozen tundra. Before long, they come across a field of fire, with the scene that something is definitely very wrong. On the island of Fiji, Colonel Ryan Beckett has been sent in to rescue Julie McGrath, a specialist whose help is needed to avert the impending end of mankind. In an underground bunker, Beckett, McGrath, and the President of the United States learn that a series of nuclear tests in China have destabilized the Pacific tectonic plate. What this means is that, with the plate shifting, built-up pressure is being released that will culminate in a dramatic rise in Earth's temperature that will lead to the death of all mankind. And the only way to fix it is to set off counter-nuclear detonations centered in Los Angeles. And there's only three days to evacuate everyone, set off the nuke, and save the world. Seems easy enough. The evacuation of Los Angeles begins, during which time Beckett's only daughter is trapped in a tunnel by a gas line explosion and left to fend for herself in a now quasi-deserted L.A. Beckett and his team head into L.A. with two nuclear warheads. En route to the target site, their convoy is ambushed and one of their team is killed. When they finally make it to the detonation site, McGrath determines that, due to a mistake in their calculations, a single nuke won't be powerful enough to stop the plate shifting. Uh-oh. With an hour left to detonation, the team needs to set off the second nuke at least ten miles away from the first. The clock is ticking, and yeah, you know what? They drop the nuke down a ventilation shaft that was mentioned irrelevantly at the beginning of the movie and stop the plate shift and save the underworld. Thank God, the end. Scorcher makes me sad. And not because it's a tearjerker or that it touches your heart at some point. It makes me sad because it's a terrible movie that somehow manages to attract several high-quality actors. There's John Rhys Davies, who was Sala in Indiana Jones, Gimli in the Lord of the Rings movie, and Professor Arturo in Sliders. There's Rutger Hauer, who was in Blade Runner, The Hitcher, Sin City, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Hobo with a Shotgun. So much wasted talent. I can't overemphasize how bad this movie is. The basic premise is probably could have worked out somewhat okay, but the three-day time constraint pretty much limits any character development. Also, because there isn't really a true villain for the movie to turn to, it has to make up random villains, like the random guys with guns that ambush the convoy for no apparent reason. Don't worry, they're all dead now. And the primary antagonist is pretty much just there to rub the fact that he's there because no one trusts Beckett to get the job done in Beckett's face. Oh, and to basically kill everyone when the president doesn't believe the second nuke needs to be set off. Because two nukes going off ten miles apart is so much more devastating than a single nuke going off in a major city. The movie has so many terrible plot points and cliches, I stopped counting. First off, we're randomly shown the access vent that will be the linchpin for setting off the second nuke at the end of the film. The fact that a second backup nuke was brought along and now is actually necessary, what if it had been needed because the first one failed? Third, after being trapped in the tunnel of fire that incinerates everyone and melts cars, Beckett's daughter emerges from the trunk of a car unscathed and able to touch all the vehicles around her. She's got nice hands. Number four, Delta can fly from DC to LA in five hours. The G6 looking jet Beckett and his team fly in take approximately nine hours, so apparently when you need to save the world, it's best to go in the slowest jet ever. 5. LA is completely evacuated in less than 24 hours. Good luck with that. 6. Beckett's daughter tries to start a car. The car starts making those rrr, 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 you know, fake starting sounds, and then continues to make those sounds when she gives up and puts her head in her hands. The one guy killed when the convoy is ambushed made the fatal mistake of having just told everyone that not only does he have seven kids, he's got an eighth on the way. Shocker. And lastly, the president and general who ordered the second nuke stopped totally pretend like it's no big thing since the second nuke ultimately saved the day. There's a timer also on that second nuke that at one point goes from 17 hours to 14 minutes left in the span of 30 seconds. Good job. The only small redeeming quality is the mirrored father-daughter relationship between Beckett and his daughter and McGrath and her father, well, no, never mind. That doesn't actually redeem anything. Forget about this movie. If you feel the need to watch an early 2000s Earth disaster flick, try the core. Could be good. So that wraps up Scorcher. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for our video updates. Leave any comments or suggestions for movies you'd like to see reviewed down below. Follow us on Twitter at Fapcast. Like us on Facebook. And unless shitty movies fall down a vent shaft alongside an Earth-saving nuke, we'll see you next time. The movie is fucking terrible. Damn. It's like, did, did you owe someone a life debt? And this is how you're paying it off? <laughs> Jesus. Like, listen, you saved my life back in the war, I'll be in your goddamn movie.
but you're good. All right. 